Hi, my name's Dave, you're watching Make For Others, and in this episode, we're gonna build an invisible wall mount for a helmet for my friend George. I've been working on making a Star Wars Boba Fett helmet for my friend George, and for the times he's not wearing it, I wanted to give him a few options for how it could be displayed. We covered the making of the helmet and the helmet stand in other videos. There are links below for those. In this video, I wanted to make some kind of wall mount that was practically invisible when being used. I actually made a wall mount a while ago for my son's helmet, but I've always wanted to improve on the design. The basic idea is to make something that's strong enough to hold the helmet in place, soft enough that it doesn't damage the helmet, and small enough that it isn't seen much, if at all, and inexpensive. A simple, small, easy, and inexpensive solution would be great. So from here, I set a goal of walking around a large supply store for at least an hour. Why? Because I wanted to look at everything on the shelves as a possible solution or part of a solution for the design. It can sometimes be easy to come up with a first idea and then just go with that before thinking through other possible solutions that could be better, which is how the first version of the wall mount got made. For that, I just didn't have much time and went with the first idea. So I wanted to come up with at least a few ideas and decide which one was best. The one I liked best was built around two small corner braces and a bunch of other different pieces from the parts bins. So I bought the corner braces and other pieces. From there, I put the corner braces together with Chicago screws and used two of them to stop any twisting. The flat brackets came in a big bag and some nuts and bolts were used to connect some of them to the corner braces. After measuring the helmet from the bottom of the back to where the helmet started curving, more flat brackets got added to match that length. After a quick test fit, it looked pretty good, but the flat brackets were twisting since there was only one connection point with the corner brace. So I marked where some of the material needed to be removed so another nut and bolt could be used, and then spent maybe 15 seconds with a rotary tool, getting rid of the marked area. After reassembling, it was strong and small, but not soft. So, some extra EVA foam material got measured and cut to act as a padding between the mount and the helmet. Since it also reduces the amount of space between the corner braces, the helmet can't wiggle around as much. You could put more padding on the other parts of the braces that touch the helmet, but since that would have made it more noticeable, I didn't do that. Before connecting the foam to the metal, I used some thread lock on the nuts and bolts so they wouldn't move around. I didn't do this with the Chicago screws that connected the corner braces since I could always reach those parts and needed to be able to keep them separate for connecting one of them to the wall. Some hot glue on all the places where the EVA foam and the brackets touched and it was good to go. To test it out, I disconnected the corner braces so I could screw one of them into the wall. I already had posts in the wall for my son's helmet wall mount, so I just used one of those. After connecting to the wall, I reconnected it with the rest of the mount and that was it. Simple, small, easy, and inexpensive. Along with the wall mount, I'm gonna give George a wall anchor and screws, so all he needs is a screwdriver or drill. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. It was quick, easy, and pretty inexpensive. I'll probably be making another one to replace the one that we have on our wall. This is also really easily adjustable, so if you've got a different helmet size or mask or anything like that, you can easily adjust how far it sticks out from the wall and then how high it goes up for support.